Hello friends, this video on organisms and their surroundings part 27 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So based on whatever we have studied so far, we saw that the living organisms, they have different habitats based upon their uh, own characteristics, their own food habits, their own behavior. Uh, similarly, they are very well distinguished from the non-living organisms as well. So let us look at a few questions. Question number one. What is a habitat? So habitat is a natural home or environment where an organism lives. Now when you look at these organisms, the wild animals, they all live in a forest. So forest is a habitat for these animals. Question number two. How are cactus adapted to survive in a desert? Now as we know, a desert is an area where you have very hot, which is very hot during the day and very cold at night. It has sandy soil everywhere which is not, which doesn't support a lot of vegetation. So it is quite a challenging task to, for plants to survive in a desert. But these specialized plants that is cactus, they do survive. And you know how? They have certain adaptations like their leaves are modified into spines due to which there is minimum water loss because transpiration is the process in which water is lost from the leaves of the plant but here they do not have leaves at all so the transpiration is minimum so the water loss is minimum because in a deserted area there is lack of water. Leaves are modified to spines. These spines, they not only help in reducing the water loss, they also provide protection against animals. Long roots so that they can go deep into the soil in search of water because in deserted area, the water table or the level of the water under the ground is also very low. So the roots, if are long, then they can go deep into the soil to reach out to that water. Question number three. Fill up the blanks. The presence of specific features which enable a plant or an animal to live in a particular habitat is called adaptation. Like how we saw that the cactus plants, they have spines which is an adaptation so that they can survive in a desert. The habitats of the plants and animals that live on land are called terrestrial habitats. The habitats of plants and animals that live in water are called aquatic habitats. Soil, water and air are the dash factors of a habitat. Now every habitat will have two important elements, the biotic components and the abiotic components. Now since these are non-living components, so they are abiotic components. Changes in our surroundings that make us respond to them are called stimuli. Question number four. Which of, the which of the things in the following list are non-living? Plow. So plow is obviously non-living because it is uh, a tool which is used in agriculture. Mushroom. The mushroom is a fungi. It is a living organism. So it is a fungi. Sewing machine. So sewing machine is again a machine. It, it doesn't have life. It doesn't breathe. It doesn't eat food and all that. So it is again non-living. Radio. Radio is again a machine which produces sound but that doesn't mean that the radio can speak. It, can, it produces sound but when you look at the other characteristics of life, it doesn't have any. Boat. Boat is again non-living because though it can move from one place to another but it doesn't satisfy the other characteristics of being living organism. Water hyacinth. So this is a plant which is living. Earthworm, it is again a worm which lives in the soil, it eats food, uh, it excretes out the waste products from its body, it also moves, it respires, so it shows a lot of signs of life. So obviously it is living. Question number five. Give an example of a living, of a non-living thing which shows any two characteristics of living things. So the first example could be buses can move, so they show movement. The second example could be buses need energy to move. So they not only move but they also need energy and that is why you give petrol or diesel as uh, something or as kind of food which would provide energy to the bus so that it can move from one place to another. Question number six, which of the non-living things listed below were once part of a living thing? Butter. So from where do we get butter? Butter is obtained from milk. 
and from where do we get milk milk is obtained from dairy animals like maybe cows buffaloes goats so is so they are all living things so butter is obtained from something which was once a living thing leather so leather is obtained from skin of animals so animals were once again they were also living once upon a time soil the soil is a non living thing it was it is never derived from anything which was living sometimes so, so in fact a lot of living things live in the soil but soil as such is non living wool wool is again obtained from animal hairs or animal fur so animals were again living so it was also obtained from a living thing electric bulb not really this is a non living thing cooking oil so oil is obtained from seeds of plants and what are plants plants are again living things so this was all this is also obtained from something which was living salt from where do we get salt normally in the oceans we have lot of salt so but it was never obtained from a living thing apple so from where do we get apple so apple is something which is obtained directly from plants and plants were living rubber rubber again is obtained from the latex of rubber tree which is again a plant which was also living so like this we can say that butter leather wool cooking oil apple rubber these were all obtained from certain things which were once living question number 7 list the common characteristics of the living things now living things satisfy all these common characteristics that is they grow they respire they eat food to get energy they excrete waste materials from their body they move they reproduce so these are some of the very common characteristics which is shown by all living organisms question number 8 explain why speed is important for survival in the grasslands for animals that live in there now why speed is important when we talk about grasslands grasslands are those areas where you mostly have grasses or you have short shrubs you do not have long huge trees now when the number of big trees are small then the places to hide is also small so in that case if an animal wants to protect itself from the predator then the only option that the animal has is to run so the animal has to be a fast runner so speed plays a very important role in order to protect the animal from its predators because if it was in case of a forest there are huge trees so animals can very easily hide behind the trees but here there are no trees it is all like open stretch of land with just grasses so they become visible to their predators very easily so running is the only option they are left with so that is why speed is very important because it helps the prey to protect themselves from their predators so with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson and i hope that this lesson on organisms and their surroundings would have helped you to understand the concepts and you will try to relate it in to your day to day life So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.